Hi, everyone. We are streaming live, and um, I'm here with Debbie Mishima, and I will introduce her in a second. And tonight is going to be my lesson all about brushes. So, hi, Debbie. How are you doing? I'm doing good, except I can't see you. You can't see me in live streaming. Oh, well, let me turn around and I'm see. just going to. I just saw it on the computer, but let me turn around and see it. So I am going to stop my video and check it out. I have you now. But I don't have you on my computer. Funny that. Why are you not on my computer? Huh. I do have you on uh, my iPad. Well, just me now, but I cannot get you for some reason on my computer. Well, we are up and we are live and I've got it on my computer over here. And I saw you saying, why can't I find it on my computer? <laughs> so we have a variety of people. Can you see it on your iPad? I'm just gonna look on my iPad. I have it on my iPhone. Okay, well, if you're at, if you can see it live, then that's fine. I always use my phone. Debbie's gonna be here tonight and she's gonna help as I teach about brushes. And she's going, when I ask for questions, she's going to be um, relaying your questions to me. Um, it's gonna be a little different tonight. I'm going to talk a little bit about brushes. And um, then I'm gonna have you ask questions um, because it will just be too hard um, since this is more of a lecture demo, um, it would be too hard for me to be interrupted by Debbie. So as soon as Debbie can see us and see the questions and I need to see how many people are here. So I'm gonna give you everyone a few more minutes to find us. And I'm going to stop my video and go look at the computer. more of a lecture demo, um, it would be too hard for me to be interrupted by Debbie. So as soon as Debbie can... Okay, we are up. We've got a little over 50 people watching right now. We had about 200 um going to join us so we'll give them a few more minutes step have you found it on facebook I find you yay okay let me go mute my computer okay and i will spotlight myself Okay, hi everyone. And is everybody seeing me now? Because I'm seeing Debbie. And Debbie, can you tell if I'm the one who's being spotlighted? Hi, everyone. And is everybody seeing me now? Because I'm seeing yes. And, and Debbie, can you mute your audio, please? And Debbie, can you tell if I'm the one who's being spotlighted? You are being spotlighted. Hope now I'm spotlighted. Yeah, um, 
I'm trying. Okay, hang on two seconds. My audio is muted, right? Um, well, you can mute your audio um, through Zoom. Um, but the problem is I can't get my, my audio video up. It's always on you and I don't know why. What are you seeing, Debbie? Hang on everyone, I'm sorry for the, the problem. I'm seeing me. Okay. Now I'm seeing brushes, oops. Okay, so Debbie, you know what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to come in. Can you join with your telephone or your iPad so we can have a third um, party so we can spotlight it because you can't spotlight. I am. Just oh, join in with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone. It's just going to be a few more minutes, and and in that time, let me switch my video back. There we go. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit about brushes because I noticed that every time we have a class, um, you're all asking what brush did you use and why did you use it and you all seem hungry for knowledge when it comes to brushes so what i wanted to do is just kind of um cover some basics and i've got to tell you over the years brushes have changed tremendously um i started painting when my kids were in diapers and um so it's been a long, long time. It's been over 30 years since I started painting. And brushes used to be made in um, the United Kingdom. They were made in Germany and they were made in Japan, the quality brushes, but that's where they were made. And over the years, it's switched. And now they're being made in Sri Lanka and India, um, China, and um, so I found that really interesting that even the better brush manufacturers are definitely um, switching to um, different manu manufacturers. And we have to be careful what we call manufacturers because even though brand names like Silver, Dynasty, um, Jasonia brands, um, all of those are not generally made in the United States. Maybe some of them might be um, put together in the um, United States, but al almost all parts of brushes are made overseas. And that's really important to know because there has also been a switch in the fact that brushes are no longer um, they're readily available with uh, natural hairs. More and more brushes are leaning towards the, the synthetics. And some of the synthetics, I personally feel are better than some of the natural hairs that were out there. Um, and so we're going to discuss that, um, but I want to make sure Debbie gets in first. How are you doing, Deb? I think I'm in. All yeah. right, you are. Hang on, guys. Perfect timing. Okay, so now I can spotlight myself. There we go. All right. So I'm going to switch over, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about flat brushes. And as you can see, we have quite a few different brushes. And I think where there's a lot of confusion is there's so many different names. Now, let me ask you, have you heard of shader, brights, short brights, flats, square washes, washes, blenders, those are all names for flat brushes. And I wanna discuss a little bit about all of these different types here and about the different types of hairs that are in them. Most of you enjoy using, most of you are acrylic painters and most of you enjoy using tackline brush, brushes and tackline hairs are synthetic hairs, but not all tacklines are made the same. And I really do try to avoid brushes that were made in China. And because I don't feel as though the quality of Teclon is there, what I do is I look to see if they're now made in Sri Lanka. Oh, that's not there, but this one has it. Sri Lanka is right there. And this is a Jasonia brush. So what I wanted to talk about really quick is notice the difference in the length of hairs. 
This is a square wash. And the reason why it's called a square wash is because for the most part, the hairs form a square. And let me make sure that you can see that okay. Now, flat brushes, shader brushes, um, all of those type of brushes are all brushes that form right angles on the tips, but they're not all made the same. And so now I really enjoy using the Teclon by Gisonius, um, and this is the Sure Touch brand. And I'm gonna hold that up so you can see in case you can't understand what I'm saying. I like this a lot because To me, when I'm working with brushes, what I what's important to me, and this is just um, some stroke paper, is that I want the, the moisture to flow evenly, and I want to have a nice spring in my brush. And I can tell that this is a high quality tech line because it performs very well and does exactly what I want it to do. Some other square washes are the Dynasty Black Gold. And, um, and those are made out of Teclan too. Now, where it gets confusing, and I am going to talk about all the inconsistencies in brushes, is this also is considered a square wash, but obviously it's not square. It's just in that family. Um, this is a silver, crystal brush and this is superb quality Teclon also. So all three lines of Teclon, the silver crystal, the black gold and the Gisonia Sure Touch are amazing Teclon brushes. I absolutely love them. But again, how would you be able to tell if that this was a square wash by looking at it because it just forms a rectangle? Well, you just have to get out. You have to look at the sites. You have to look at what they are. And it's not what it's called that's the problem. What you want to do is you want to make sure that it performs the way you want it to. Now, there's another form of filament, um, and this is the ruby satin. Um, and this is a different form of Teclon. And Jasonia has another line. I don't have any other flats. I have some of their rounds or some of their filberts. And it's very similar to Ruby Satin and Sabalon um, by Gisonia are very similar fibers. So when I'm looking for spring, this gives you a lot more spring than a regular Teclon. And um, it's just a little bit, to me, just a little bit softer. So I find that people who used to paint with oils like this type of filbert or like this type of hair a little bit more. Um, it's superb to float with and you can blend with it. And it is a multi-purpose um, brush. Now this one is called a bright. Now that's another thing that's inconsistent. And I wanna talk about the different lengths here. Notice how long this one is. Whenever you see hairs like this, this generally is for lettering or for stroke work. The longer they get, the better it is for, um, just like the difference between a short liner brush and a script liner brush, the longer it is, the more paint it would hold. And then you can pull a stroke or pull a letter or do calligraphy with this brush much easier than this. I wanna put that one to the side. Now, however, the fact that this is called a bright, I was really surprised with because over the years, for me, what was called a bright was brushes that had shorter hairs. Brushes with shorter hairs like this were either called brights or they were called blenders. And so I thought it was really interesting that now here, you can see how much longer this is, that there is an inconsistency in what it's being called. So can you tell how it's going to work by the name? Not always, and that's one of the problems. This also, now I've got to tell you, this is my oldest brush that I own. This is an original Ann Kingsland brush and I used it for 
for my oil painting and it's I just cherish it because it's brand new I haven't used it yet it still has the um the sizing in it but this is a blender also and you can see how short the hairs are now why would you have shorter hairs in a brush well I use these for oils or for acrylic blending so when you are pushing and pulling most of us are doing floating so when you have the shorter brush and you want to blend the two together and you're pushing and pulling and you're trying to create, take two colors and blend them together, you need a shorter brush to really push the paint around. And that's why the hairs are a little bit shorter. And I love these for um, oils. I love these for watercolor. And I love these also for acrylic blending not acrylic layering. Getting back to this bright, and then this square wash. These are the perfect length for floating. They're just, they're not exactly square. They're a little bit longer than square. And so what you need for floating or base coating or the basic acrylic techniques that you use is you need an average length hair not a short and not a long. So this would be considered a short hair brush. This would be considered a long. Now this is an average. So you can really see the difference there. So this particular brush is a Monza brush and I absolutely love it. Why do I like it? Well, if you can look, if you can see, can you see how thick the filaments are in there? Let me put it over there. See how thick that is? I love that because what's going to happen is whether I'm using watercolor or oil or acrylics, it's really going to hold the medium that's, that I have in there. And I'm going to be able to really blend with it. And I like that really well, really well for blending. Um, there are some other hairs that are very similar. This is another Monza, Monza line. And what this is, this is a faux squirrel hair. So it's another synthetic. Um, Dynasty also has their faux squirrel and they're very similar. What I find is Dynasties are not as thick as, and full as the Monza brand. And also they're a little bit more springy. They're a little bit more soft. So now, which is better? Well, this one's less expensive. The Dynasty is less expensive. And as far as which one's better, well, it comes down to personal choice and the techniques that you're using. I really don't like when an artist wants to put everything into a box and say, you have to use this brush for, let's say, floating. Because the truth of the matter is, everyone's approach to painting is going to be a little bit different. And I know each time I come in and paint, one time I'm heavy handed, the next time I'm light handed, depending on if I'm tired or if I have a lot of energy. Um, so, you know, my approach to painting can change just by my moods or my energy level. And then there's different techniques. Am I blending? Am I floating? Am I glazing? You know, all of those things make a difference. And then personal preference. Do I like something that's a little softer that has a lot more spring? Or do I want something that's a little bit less springy? Recently, um, I heard uh, in, in, an interview of a young artist and she was talking about snap of a brush. I've never heard anybody use that, but I think she, what she was referring to was the spring that's in a brush. And that's very important to, no matter what medium you're painting in. So now we have some specialty brushes too. Oh, and I also wanted to show this was another one and this is um, a sure touch. This is really long also, and this really is for stroke, but some people actually like this for floating. Um, I, Sandy Abishan, who's passed away, she used to love to side load with brushes this long. Why? Probably because she was a stroke artist to begin with. And so 
again, I'm giving you the general information about um, flat brushes and di the different hairs and telling you overall what most people use. But there's always exceptions to the rule. And so we, you know, like I said, Sandy used these longer brushes to float with. I was in a class once and I was kind of like shocked that she was using something so long, but for her, it worked beautifully. Now these are silver white brush, brushes and they're um, very, very, very soft. And so I would not use these for acrylics. What I would use these for are watercolors or for um, glass painting because they are so soft. You could, um, if you're doing glass painting, you can go into the glass and you're not going to see a lot of stroke, um, a lot of stroking. As a matter of fact, what I would prefer for glass painting would probably be um, using a filbert. And we'll talk about filberts in a bit. I also really like these when I'm going over and I'm doing a veil. And a veil is when you put a light glaze all over the entire surface or a wash. It just really, really goes on nice and smooth and even. And because it, there is so much spring in it, it does not leave a lot of stroke marks. Okay, now this is a square Teclon brush and I, and this is a Windsor Newton and I bought this when I was in a Louise Jackson class. And so here we have a Teclon brush that's being used for watercolor and that's what it was for. And, but it's a little bit shorter so you can push and pull that pure pigment on the paper, but it is a Teclon and it, um, even though there's a lot of spring, it also has a nice pressure on it. Now, another one that is to me the best brush for watercolor, and it's a very expensive brush. I'll tell you, this brush is probably 28 years old. Um, it is a natural brush. It's the black velvet line. And I absolutely love it. I don't know what type of natural hair is in here. But what you'll notice with natural hairs, see how it bends up and it doesn't go back. So you have to make sure you have your paint in there or your water, and that's when you get your spring. But this will last forever. And again, I remember taking a class with Dee Silver and she said the most expensive brush you'll ever get are inexpensive brushes, like a dollar or two dollar brushes, because you'll use them once and throw them away. This brush now, I don't know what this retails for. I know it's expensive, but it will last a lifetime. My favorite, now I love all of these and I wouldn't be mentioning them if I didn't love them all, but one brush that kind of stands out amongst others is the Golden Natural by Silver Brush. Why is this different? Because it's a combination of Teclon and natural hairs. Now, D. Silver will never tell me what the natural hair is, so I don't know. But I know that this also is a high quality brush and it is wonderful for all mediums. Um, and, I've, and I've used the um, filberts for oils. I've used this particular brush for watercolor and I use it um, all the time for acrylics. So now I wanna show you that it has a wonderful spring. But one thing I noticed about it is while Teclan brushes will run out of water, this is like the ever ready bunny. And because of those natural hairs, it just keeps holding water and holding water and holding water. And I wish more paint companies or more brush companies would make the combination hair like this. They're hard to find, and I think silver is one of the few who, who make them. These last two um, are flat brushes, but these are definitely brushes that I would use for calligraphy. This is from Gisonio's um, Sure Touch, and it's, she calls it her square stroke. 
And this is from the Silver Ultra Mini. And this is called, this is a Tenna and it's called a lettering brush. Now you can see they're both squared off. And why, are, why is this important that they're squared off? Well, I'm not a calligrapher. So, but if I were to come in and just want to do the letter D, you can see how easily you, you can make it. You can make these sharp little thin lines and then pull down nice and thick. And it's because it's kind of like a flat brush and a liner combined. And I just love working with these and they come in a variety of sizes. And I believe um, Joe's, uh, I'm not sure if Joe's goes down smaller than a quarter inch or not. You'd have to check online, but this is also superb. And these are both tack line brushes. And again, you can chisel, chisel pull, pull down, and it just is superb quality. Okay, so now that's the scoop on flat brushes. I threw a lot at you. So if you have any questions, please type them in the comments. Now we're gonna give you a few minutes um, to ask questions. And again, I talked about shaders, blenders, brights, flats, square washes, washes, different types of hairs. So if you have questions on that, please ask me now. Debbie, do you see any questions? Debbie, are you there? Let me switch over and see if I can see Debbie. No, I'm muted. I'm fine now. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, you know, if, you, if there's any questions. Okay, so I have one. What are the brands of the calligraphy brushes again, please? Hang on. What are the brands of what brushes? The of all of them? Ones. The calligraphy ones that you should. Oh, the, calligraphy, the two calligraphy? Yes. Well, actually, this one would work as a calligraphy too. So let me tell you the two I just showed you. This is Jasonia's Sheer Touch. She calls it a square stroke. Okay. This is a silver brush and it's an ultra mini. They, she has this amazing line of um, ultra mini brushes. And this is a lettering brush. Now, this also, this is called a stroke brush, but because it's squared off just like these, even though it's bigger, it can be, and this is a, a silver ruby satin. It can be done, it can be used the same way. And what was the name of it again? This is the silver ruby satin. Okay. And it has a really nice spring. Okay, so another question is, um, someone, uh, Becky wants to, says, I'm very interested in your blender brush you use. If I recall, it was short and stubby, stubby and blended beautifully. Is that right? It was a shorter one? Okay, for right now, um, are you talking about? I think she means your the, the the brights a short. Okay. All of these that are shorter can be used for blending. And so that's why I don't want to necessarily talk about brands as much as I I want to talk and educate you about what is the difference between blending and why would a shorter hair work better. And so this is the Monza and it's a short bright and this is also by Silver Brush. But if, as I said, Dynasty also makes the faux squirrel and they would make it in, um, in a smaller um, size also. These are wonderful for pushing and pulling and blending. So if I was blending my paints together, because it's a little bit shorter, it's going to move the paint a little bit more. 
The one I showed here, unfortunately, this has been, this particular one has been discontinued, um, but this was a golden natural um, blender. Do you store your brushes upside down or which way? Okay. The first thing I do is whenever I'm done painting, I lay my brushes down flat to dry. I even like to put them on dry paper towel yep. to allow the moisture to pull away from them. And then if there's any residue of paint, it, it um, moves away from the brush. Once they're completely dry, I do store them in an upright container like this. Right. But I make sure all the moisture is gone and they're completely dry first. Okay. And I think that's really all the questions about those brushes. Okay, well, then let's move on and let's talk about my next group of brushes. I'm going to talk about some angle brushes. Let me put these away. And I want to show you a really inexpensive. I don't even know if they still make Pringles. These are pretty, really old. But look at how great Pringles cans can store your brushes. They do make Pringles still. They still make spring Pringles? They do. I don't buy them, but I've seen them in the stores. Okay. So let's talk about angle brushes. Many of you love to paint with angle brushes. And once again, not all the angle brushes are made the same. I really, I mean, out of all of these, I really like this type of this type of length is perfect as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's not too long and it's not too short. On this one, and I'm talking about for my style acrylic painting, I don't use um, angle brushes a lot. I use them for more details and getting into places. Um, and I also use them for painting on flowers. So. Here is one of my flowers that I've painted. And yeah, there's paint on there. So I'm gonna just come in with water. What I like to do is a lot of times when you're painting in flowers, you gotta come into these little areas and sometimes it's hard to get into those areas. Um, so if I'm coming into really tight areas, especially little triangle areas where I've gotta come in and scoot the paint in and float it in, that's what I use. Uh, um, a angle brush for. Now, what do I look for in an angle brush? I want to make sure when, if I'm looking for an angle brush where I'm going to be using it to float with, I want something about this length. I don't want it too short. This one's, a little, as far as I'm concerned, this is a little bit too short for me and for what I use it for. Now, if you are blending in acrylics, I, I prefer the acrylic layering technique. If I was blending in acrylics or blending with oils, this would be a lovely brush to use. Um, I do believe that this was actually um, modeled after the old Patty Dorenzo brushes that Silver used to have. And then they just recreated them in the Monza um, line. And she does a lot of acrylic um, blending. And so because they're a little bit shorter again, they're better for blending. Now we have, these are by Joe's, um, and this is the Sure Touch. And this is a little bit longer. Now, can you float with it? Yeah, you can. But you're gonna have to get used to the fact that it is a little bit longer. And when you are floating on an angle, you have to make sure those hairs are touching. And so you have to keep your hand on an angle or the brush on an angle to make sure that this part, the entire tip of the hairs are hitting your surface. I find because it's long, a little longer for me, um, it's a little bit springier than I would want. But then when you go into her smaller ones, um, I think that the length is really nice. So I don't know why that one got a little bit longer. One um, synthetic hair that I really like, it's a newer one by Silver Brush. This is called the Silver Silk 88. And I really like this. Um, I wanna play with a little bit more because 
it is a newer brush and I have not had a lot of time with it to use it. But what I really like is it, to me, it's got the perfect spring. And um, I, I would like this in a flat and then also um, in, in the angles. But what I really like is it does maintain a nice moisture consistency and I can keep just painting and painting and painting with it. And um, that's what I really look for in a, a good Teclon brush or a good synthetic brushes. Is it maintaining a consistency, a good moisture consistency when I'm painting with it? Now, the other angles that I have here, this is my Golden Natural, which I just love um, because you can just paint forever with these. And again, that's because it's got the combination of the synthetic and the natural here and there. So everyone uses these brushes differently. Now I was gonna say, um, this is the um, Lunar by Princeton. I generally do not say if I do not like something, but in this case, these are just way too stiff. There's almost no spring in them at all. I would not use these for floating or um, maybe not even, well, maybe blending they might, but they might even be a little bit too stiff for blending. I know that they have this filament in a dry brush and it would be good for dry brushing. But I wanted to point that out that because not all hairs work good for all techniques. And that's what we're talking about today. So the ones I would recommend are the Gissonier Sure Touch, the Dynasty Black Gold, I love the Dynasty Black Gold, and then the Golden Natural brushes and, and angle brushes. Any questions on angle brushes? I have a couple of uh, questions already. Okay. One is what do you clean your brushes with? Say that again. What do you clean your brushes with? What do I clean my brushes with? Well, it depends on how abusive I've been. Generally, <laughs> I use a gentle soap um, yeah. and water, and I try to get to them um, right away. If I've let them out and I've got a lot of um, paint building up in them, I will actually soak them a little bit in rubbing alcohol. And then I will come in and use a little hair conditioner in it and then rinse it all out. I never leave anything in my brushes. Um, there is a lesson about cleaning brushes in our guides by D Silver, a silver brush. And she's very, very knowledgeable about how, he, how to take care of brushes. Um, I have another question. It is, do, when you store your brushes after they're dry, do you cover them so they don't get dust or anything on them? Yeah, I do. Okay. And so another thing too is, um, like let's say the natural hairs for like goat hair and any kind of natural hair, you have to keep that covered because there's these little microscopic bugs that can get into natural hairs and they'll eat them. So like I showed you my um, water, my black velvet uh, watercolor brush that I make sure I keep a lid on it at all times. So I showed you the Pringles can. You can simply keep it covered with the lids that come with it. I also really like um, these um, patties. Um, you can still get them um, by brush patties. Um, and they have little tubes or, and with little lids that screw on. Um, and those store really well also. Good. And that was uh, only on, I only had the two questions. Okay. Okay. Everybody is enjoying this so far. Oh, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite new liner or angle brushes. And this is by Chris Hoy. Yes, I have it. Can you see this little one? Yeah, yeah, I know you like this one too, Debbie. And this is um, Chris's awesome angle. What I love this one for, first of all, I'd like Chris to make a whole line and I don't know if she makes a line of big flats and everything else, but these are really awesome. And she was right to call them her awesome um, brushes because I love the, the synthetic fiber that they're made out of. But what I really like, like on here, 
when you have to come in and you have to float these little teeny narrow areas. And like if I were putting the reflective light um, or the pass through light on the back end of it, this works just beautifully to make those little teeny floats. I love these. And, you know, again, if I were just coming in here and floating the reflective light there, I would use this brush for that. And um, I love that I can get into little teeny areas and do all these special things. You just have to make sure that when you load it, you just barely load that um, toe. And you do know that on an angle brush, let's get a bigger one. This is the toe and this is the heel. Um, I don't know why it's referred to a foot, but anyway, um, so the tip of the brush is the toe and then the back part is the heel. Another thing I like about that brush of Chris's is even though it is very, very small, it has a really nice spring to it. It really does. I love the fibers in them. And I do believe this one's made in Sri Lanka or India, which it's made in India now. And that's where your better brushes are made. Okay, so let's go on and talk about filberts and ovals. Because there's a whole lot of new brushes in this in this category. Um, when I, what I look for when I'm looking at a filbert brush, I want to make sure. Let me make sure you can see this. Okay. I want to make sure I have a nice round on it. You don't want it to come to a point. As a matter of fact, I like this one even better um, because you can actually side load um, filberts. You can blend with them. There's so many different things you can do. And I absolutely love filberts for painting flowers. So let me see if I have another flower here. Hang on two seconds. So when I'm coming in and I am floating on and um, putting in all these little ripples, I want to make sure that I don't have any harsh edges. Um, and obviously, I'd be using a much smaller filbert to do this, like this one. So when you come in with a flat and, you, and you're trying to put these little um, ripples in, it's very easy to get hard edges when you're using a flatware because the filbert is rounded, you will get a nice soft float in there. And so that's why whether I am floating or whether I'm blending, um, depending on the medium, um, I really prefer using filberts on flowers because we want flowers to look soft and it naturally does it. Also, um, for those of you who saw Priscilla's lesson, she was using um, filberts to pull strokes for her Josepha roses. And so I thought that was really interesting too that she was not using a flat. Now, one of the things I do wanna point out is again, we have different names like this is called, these were all filberts, but this was called a short filbert. So the hairs were a little bit shorter. This is called an oval glaze. Now it's shaped like a filbert, but look how long the hairs are. I find that the ovals, the oval glazes um, and oval washes are new brushes that have kind of come onto the scene. This one, wait a minute, let me wet it. This one is actually called a pointed, a pointed oval. And um, I like this for base coating. That's why it's been beat up a little bit. But what I like about this is the fact that it looks like a flat brush, but it's rounded on the edges like that. 
it's very good for base coating because then as you're base coating, as you're base coating, you're not gonna be getting any streaks. Now, some other brushes that are very sim similar, but I think are really neat, and I want to explore them a little bit more. One of the newer ones is this Sure Touch Over Oval Wash. Um, and its hairs are scaled down just a little bit. And the same with the Gisonia Oval Glaze. This one really is, um, if I don't know if you can see, but it almost looks like um, uh, it has a haircut where the hairs are stacked. And you I can see I, it. Can you see it? Yeah. And I think that's really interesting. I definitely would use this for glazing. So what is glazing? Glazing is applying a semi-transparent color to your painting. What do you use it for? Well, let's go back to my rose here. And if I had some colors that I could use, um, I would show you how to glaze. But basically, um, when I'm coming in and I'm glazing, what I want to do is I want to apply just a very, very thin amount and very transparent amount of color to deepen and, and add accents and to create interest within the design. So when I came in with all of this yellow in here, this was all glazed. And this brush is really lovely for that because you can get in and out. And again, you're not going to have a lot of streaking because of the shape of the brush. And I like that even better than using my, um, my flat brushes. Now, let's talk about some different haired brushes here. So we've got the, the oval glaze, and this is also an oval glaze. Those are both Taclon brushes. This one is the Sure Touch. Um, but it's got a, the dark black, and I thought this was either their detail line or their um, possibilities line. And I find the, yeah, I think these are the possibilities line. And I think what's really interesting is I think Joe created these because, and called them possibilities because what you can do with this synthetic fiber is endless. And so it's like, think of the possibilities of what you can do with them. Um, the Monza, again, this is the um, Monza by Silver Brush, and it is a synthetic squirrel hair, and I love this for blending. This is the Silver um, Silk 88, and again, I really like the spring on this, and I think this would be great to side load with um, and paint just like a regular flat, no matter what you do. And if you have a hard time with edges while you're floating, this might be the type of brush to get. What I like about it, it's a little bit longer in hairs, so you could easily float with this. This would really be me used more for blending. These two brushes, you can, again, what are the possibilities? You can use them for applying varnish, for base coating, for blending, for softening, um, so many things. This is the Golden Natural, and I just can't ever say enough about wonderful things about Golden Natural. I really love how they perform. And again, this is a little bit longer hair, so you could easily side load with this. This is our uh, the Ruby Satin. And again, this is very similar to the Jasonia Sabalon Filbert. And I love the spring on both of these. So if you want something with a little bit more spring than a regular tack line, you would go for this type of a hair first. Okay, so now let's talk about more ovals. Because another oval would be mops. And I think a lot of times what we're seeing is a combination of um, hairs. Now this is the definitely the possibilities line. And for this, you could so easily use this as a mop. You can use this to apply varnish. You can use this for base coating. 
because it has a lot of spring to it and it has a little bit more tooth to it, as opposed to the goat hair drops. If you like blending out your floats, you want to use a white goat hair. Both Silver Brush and Jasonia have amazing white goat hair brushes. Um, I don't know if other brands have similar ones, but these are my two favorites. So when you're floating and you need to just um, blend it out, um, I would use a white goat hair brush and I love these, but they are not good for applying varnish or, or a base coat because they're so soft. They just, you, can you see how they bend? So this one, you can see, has a lot more spring to it. it. It's not as soft, like I have to really push to bend it for this one. Just, it's for mopping things and blending. And so again, I wanna give you an overall understanding of the different types of hairs and different types of brushes so that you understand what they're used for. This is kind of in a category of its own. And this is one of our admins brushes. This is Peggy Harris's ultimate varnish brush. I use, now what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you rake out the hairs and get um, all of the hairs out before you varnish. And then to apply your varnish or to apply a base coat with this, it just goes down like silk and you have almost no streaking at all. And I love this for that reason. So for filberts, ovals, and mop brushes, do we have any questions? I'm looking. Oh, what is a good mop brush that the bristles won't fall out? Um, these two that I just said. Those two, the Joe Sonia, right? The Joe Sonia, look for white goat, yeah. white goat hair. And That's so you can see, that. I'm pulling on these hairs and I've never done this before. They're not coming out. And it's the same thing here. When you do get it, like with, especially with a big one like this, what I do is I just flick it or you can even take a comb and comb through it. And just because sometimes when they're brand new, they'll lose a few hairs. But if your brush, if your mop brushes has been losing a lot of hairs, then they're just not a good quality. Um, and um, these two are both great mop brushes. The silver white um, goat hair and also the Jasonia white goat hair. Thank you. That seems to be the only question right now. Okay. A lady did want to know where do you buy your brushes? Where do I buy my brushes? Well, um, Jasonia's you can get right from the, her own website. Um, I wasn't here to sell anything. <laughs> um, the Dynasty, I'm sure the brush guy carries the Dynasty um, brushes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For silver brushes, you can go to Jerry's Artorama and you can go to the brush guy they carry um, a lot of the silver brushes. And if you can't find something, especially with the brush guide, make sure you write to them and ask them where they are. Because like for my dry brushing brushes, they carry my dry brushing brushes. I don't have them on my, my site because I can't discount them as much as them. And um, so sometimes it always says that they're out. So now we're going to talk about rounds. Can I ask you one more question, Debbie? Sure. What was that Peggy Harris brush called that you used? Okay. This is by Silver Brush, and it's the Peggy's Ultimate Varnish Brush. And Peggy sells this, I think, on her website, Peggy Harris. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're going to talk about liners and rounds because out of all of the brushes, and I got to switch into my close up question. People always get so confused about um, liners because, well, and especially over the years, they have really, oops, I have an angle version there. They have really changed a lot. Um, but I categorize rounds and liners all kind of in the same category. Um, they're to add lines and details. We, um, there was someone who asked about a rigger and I'm gonna talk about a rigger really quick. And so 
some of the questions I've had is what's the difference between a liner brush and a script liner brush? And um, so hang on a second. So here we have two brushes. Now, if you see any inconsistencies in brushes, you're going to see them when you talk about liner brushes. Just like in sizes, I have something that's an 18 odd, and in another brand, it's the same as a double odd as far as the size goes. So you do need to at least look online and try to look at what the liner brush or what, what they look like and try to compare them to other brushes. But here we have two script liners and look at the difference in length. Um, this is considered a script liner also. And see, it's just a little bit longer. So I find it interesting how you'll have a, a lot of variation. Overall, it used to be that a script liner was three quarters to an inch long. And that's about right with this. And then a liner brush, let's see what this says. A liner brush was about like this. It was about a half inch. But now they've added so many specialty liners, especially I've noticed Jasonia has. But if you remember, Jo is a stroke artist. She's definitely going to get into things that you can pull lines with and offer as much variety for you as possible. So what you want to look for is what your preference is. Do you prefer a script liner over a liner? And I would say, if you're a beginner, a liner would be about a half inch long. And that's about what you would um, like to start with. Generally, at the less experience you have, the shorter the hair is on a liner brush, the more you like it. So like, I'm looking at this one here. And you can see how short that is. That's a 10 knot, and it is called a short liner. So one of the questions is, what's the difference between a short liner, a mid liner, and a script? So here's a script liner. This is all by the same brand. Let me find the mid liner. Okay. So you can see we have the short liner is just a little bit shorter than the mid liner. And then we have the script liner. So what we're talking about right now is just length of hairs. The less experience you have, the shorter the hair you want to use. Also, if you want to really um, have a lot of tight control, the shorter the br brush is, the better it is. I like as long of a, a liner brush as possible because it holds more paint. And I'm used to using um, a script liner now. The um, sure touch line is just a beautiful line of, of liner brushes. Um, then it comes down to personal choice. What do you like, short, medium, or long? Um, there's a variety of hairs. And again, the, the um, sure, touch, sure Touch is a Taclon brush. The Ruby Satin by Silver Brush and the um, Oh wait, that's Chris, is it? And the other brand um, by Jasonia is um, this super springy um, type of um, synthetic hair. And this I think would really work well if you enjoy pulling long strokes. So if you want to just do a long stroke like that, it works really, really well. Um, if, you're, if, if you're more of a stroke artist, I really like the flexibility in this. And then it helps you do all these loop de loops But there's one, and one of our admins asked me to talk about these. This 
is a faux squirrel liner by um, Dynasty. But you see how it's fat down here and skinny up here? They also call this a um, pot belly brush or a pregnant brush because it's super fat. To me, it's like it's a round brush with a liner stuck on it. But when you add paint to this, you can pull lines like no other. And I know I got these um, when I was attempting to learn strokes. Um, I've given up on that. But um, so what I can do is I can come in and make the lightest strokes and I can just keep going and going and going because it maintains so much moisture in the brush. Do you see what I was able to do with all of that? Um, when you have paint in here, you can really load it up and just keep pulling and pulling and pulling without having to reload. And that is the whole purpose of these pot belly or pregnant type brushes. And most manufacturers carry these type of uh, liner brushes. So what's the difference between a liner and a round? Basically a liner and a round, um, it's the thickness of hairs in them. And round brushes can be used for so many different things. I always call uh, a round brush the workhorse um, in the paint, especially with acrylic painting. I used to love number three rounds and now it's, they're getting harder to find. You either have to go with a number two or a number four. Again, things have changed. They've gone to different countries, but this is a number three. I really am happy that there's a number three in here because I like that size. Um, but what do you do with these? The sky's the limit. Um, one of the things I like to do, well, it, you know, you can pull strokes and let's see if I can possibly pull a stroke. Okay, that was just a really bad stroke. And again, I'm not a stroke artist, but the, I like these for so many things. Um, I like to flatten them. And then I can just pull and fill in things with them when they're flattened. I use my number three to fill in things all the time. It's like if I was base coating the stem, I would flatten it out and just pull in the stem. Um, Debbie, one of the ladies was wondering just to get an idea of the length of the brushes, what is the, what is the size of your paper? Hmm. This paper is eight and a half by 11. So the blue okay. one is a little uh, bigger. Probably like nine by 12. Okay. Yeah, I guess they just wanted to know, get an idea of the length of the brushes. That okay. Way. So again, like I said, a regular liner is about a half inch long. The short liner is a little smaller. And a script liner is anywhere from three quarters to an inch long. This is about an inch long. Okay. This is over an inch. It's almost an inch and a half of the pot belly one. I hope that helps. Okay. So now I love, love, love my, my round brushes. I use them all the time for various things. Um, there's a variety of um, fibers and filaments, but I've discussed all of them in the other um, types of brushes. And so I don't think we have to go into them. I will say though, again, for the golden natural, what I love about this is um, I tend to stir my paint. Big no, no, you're not supposed to stir your paint with your liner brush, but I do it when I'm, you know, mixing it to do line work. And a lot of times the brushes will splay open. And let me see if I have it one here. Okay. Not that I have any of these brushes. Let's see if I have one that's splayed. No, these are all my good ones. Okay. So anyway, um, if they splay open, and you know what I'm talking about, they kind of look like um, they've been out in the like you've been out in the sun, what happens is um, these brushes have interlarked hairs and they have like a memory. So when you stick them in the water, even though they splay out, they reshape themselves. And I really 
really like the pierce one. See, this is what I'm talking about. See how that's splayed out? Now watch what happens when I dip it in water. See how it reshapes itself? It's like magic and I absolutely love that. And so if you tend to abuse your brushes like I do, I guess this is a do as I say, not as I do. Um, but that's one of the things I really like about um, the silver brushes. Now I wanna talk about lettering a little bit more because the other day um, we had Tracy Morrow on and she used the rigger. And while the rigger is a wonderful brush, there are other brushes that you can also use. I like using round brushes for lettering because you can flatten them out. So, here's my golden natural. And I'm going to just pinch it so you can see when I pinch it, it becomes flat. And then I can come in and I can do like the letter one. This is a lettering brush and it's a little bit smaller than that other one was. What's nice about this is it's made for this and you don't have to do anything with it. It's automatically squared out. So again, it has, this has just such a superb chisel. That's just really, really nice. And I don't do calligraphy, but I do a lot of lettering. You've seen a lot of my designs have lettering in it. And so this just would so easily be able to come in and create small lines, fill in. So again, I'm trying to show you a variety of brushes and a variety of ways to do things. This is the rigger. And I'm not sure which one Tracy used. I don't know that it was the faux squirrel, but again, this is really nice to fill in and to do lines also. So when it comes to liners, it's very important that you know yourself and you know what kind of liners you, you like. Um, if you're going into a class and you know you like a short liner and your teacher's calling for a script liner, um, I would email her and tell her your preference is to use a short liner and ask her if it's okay. I know for me, whenever I teach, especially like at a convention, I would let people use whatever brushes they were comfortable with. And if they could not get them to perform the way I wanted them to, then they could come in and buy my brushes. So any question on liner brushes? Um, the only one I have so far is, have you heard of Dynasty's Faux Squirrel Liner? And I think it's Eau Reservoir. Have you ever heard of them? And do you know how to use them? That's this one. That's the popular that, one. Mm -hmm. is, oh, OK. So that's what I just demonstrated. Yeah. A lady was just saying she has so much trouble with those ones. Really? Well, what's really important is that you make sure that your paint is thinned um, and uh, you thin your paint to a, um, I, it's more of a cream-like consistency. It's not ink, ink is too watery. And then you make sure you just work out of your shoulder and these just keep going and going and going and they're wonderful. But that's exactly what that is here. And another lady wanted to know what the brand name of the pot belly brush was. That's what this is. That's what that is, right? That's okay, but I've got to say now, I don't want to just promote this because there's other brands that have the same type. What you're looking for, and, and I'm calling it a pregnant or a pot belly, because I think Jasonia might carry these too, is um, they're fatter down here. So if you look, it almost looks like it's a round brush with a liner brush connected to it. Right. Okay. okay. So that's what you're going to look for. Okay. And that was all I have. Okay, so I'm going to briefly, briefly say that I had some special specialty brushes that I was going to get into, and I'm not going to do that because we're out of time. So I'm going to simply come back on now, switch my video. I can take my glasses off. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you really enjoy this. 
more than anything I want to convey, convey to you is you do not have to have thousands of brushes in your arsenal. I have one container. That's broad. And those are pretty much all I use. I, you know, I have my basics and then I have my dry brushing brushes. I probably have more dry brushing brushes than I do um, brushes to float or line with and do all the other techniques. I also have brushes for different mediums. So I keep all my oil brushes in one bin and I keep my watercolors and uh, brushes in another bin and my acrylics. And then I have specialty brushes in case I wanna do, you know, something with alcohol ink or some other unique um, type of painting medium. Um, but you do not have to buy every brush on the market. If someone says to you, you're going to need this specific brand of a flat brush and, um, and let's say it's a number eight, then you can write to them and say, okay, well, I have this brand, why can't I use that? Because uh, chances are you can. And it's just that they, the artist who's teaching, prefers that particular brush and that particular brand. But paint with what you are comfortable with. That's the most important thing. Now, I'm really happy that the conventions are coming back in, um, the, the, not the virtual, the real conventions are coming back in because more than anything, it is so much fun to go into a, a, a booth like the brush guys and just look at all the different brushes and compare them and touch them and feel them. And it's just, because the one thing I noticed too is over time, the brushes are a lot lighter than the older brushes. And I thought that was really interesting too. Um, and so everyone is going to have different techniques. Everyone is going to have different preferences. I'm not here to sell you on any one brand today. I'm here to just give you a general understanding of what brushes are and what the different types are, why there's so many different um, inconsistencies. For the most part, it's because they're being made by different manufacturers in different countries. And that's the main reason. Um, but um, I wanted to give you an overall understanding of brushes. And I hope this has really helped you a lot so that you can make education, educated guesses now when you go out and you buy brushes. So if you have any more questions, put them in the comments and I will periodically check them. So thank you. Thank you so much, Debbie, for helping me with the questions. Thank you. Great. And we'll see you all next week for um, Trisha Joyner's coming up next week. So we'll see you for that class. Good night, everyone.